We're all pretty familiar with how 1080p and 4K and even 8K nowadays refers to the number of pixels on a screen and how sharp the image will look. But the often less talked about and arguably more important new format that's come out in recent years is HDR or high dynamic range. And instead of resolution, this relates to the brightness, the contrast, and the color of the images on your TV. But the thing is that, well, there's a ton of HDR formats out there and they all handle HDR a little bit differently. Now, you can have a TV though that supports a bunch of these different formats, like this 65 inch Amazon Fire TV Omni that I have here. Thanks to Amazon for letting me borrow this and for partnering with me to help make this video. But it is still important to know what HDR is, what the differences are between the different HDR formats and which ones you might want to make sure your new HDR TV supports before you buy it. <laughs> Alexa, turn on the TV. I really like that you can do that without touching the remote on this TV. I wish my other TVs could do that. It uses far field mics built into the TV to be able to hear you talk to Alexa, even if you're far away. Also, you can electronically disable Alexa entirely on this TV by flipping this switch here for anyone curious. Anyway though, a bit about what HDR is. Now, as mentioned, 1080p, 4K, 8K, these are all resolutions, so the literal number of pixels a TV has on it. Generally speaking, the higher this number on your TV, the sharper things will look or the higher definition they will have. HDR, or high dynamic range, is really about a few factors for a TV, frankly. The brightness, the contrast ratio, and the color accuracy. Now for brightness and contrast ratio, aka the difference between the brightest parts of the image on the TV versus the darkest parts, HDR can allow for images to have a much larger contrast ratio than SDR or standard dynamic range. For example, we can have a sunset scene and the sun can be super bright while the darker parts can be much darker, but also more grades of light and dark so that the darker parts can have more details in them while still being very dark. And the area around the sun can be gradually less bright instead of just exposing for the sun and having that look good and all the dark areas look way too dark or exposing for the dark areas and those will look good and the bright parts are blown out, you can have both. And color accuracy is improved by the fact that HDR is 10-bit color at least, instead of 8-bit color. Now that means that instead of having 256 shades of each red, green, and blue, the colors we use to make all the other colors on TV, giving us 16.78 million shades of color to choose from. For HDR, if we have 10 bits of color, we will have 1,024 shades of each red, green, and blue, equaling over a billion colors. Now this means that the color gradients from one to another in a rainbow, as a simple simple example, would be more colors in between each primary ones, but it also means that there are more colors to choose from. So we can use a candy red for that specific apple versus just red, which might be more accurate to real life. Now, all of these things are about getting our TVs a bit closer to what our eyes are capable of seeing in the real world. Thanks to the Ring doorbell integration with this TV, I know exactly who's at the door right now without interrupting my show. Hello. Who's here? Sorry, I'm starving. Now, HDR cable TVs have various different HDR formats that they can use. Think of them like languages. The content you would watch uses these formats, languages, to speak or create the HDR video, and the TV then uses the same format to be able to understand, display that particular HDR content. And so there are a few more important ones that you need to know about. But let's try something real quick. This TV can use Alexa routines to control your lights and other smart appliances to all do something at once using a custom phrase, like Alexa, movie night. Firstly is HDR10, and it's by far the most popular format. It's also free for companies to use. So all the TVs, monitors, phones, anything that says it's HDR, very good chance that it will play HDR10. The major downside to this format is that it has static metadata, which is the data that can tell the video how to reproduce colors, brightness, and contrast. And because of this, a video in HDR10 will have the same values for all of that for the entire video. Again, pretty much every streaming service that says it has HDR content will at least stream that in HDR10. So on this TV, when you say, Alexa, open Prime Video, and you see an HDR show in Prime Video, it'll most likely be in HDR10, unless it says otherwise, which we'll check out in a bit. Now, HDR10 will still look better than SDR, for sure, but there are arguably better formats out there. For example, 
HDR10+, plus, which of course is better than HDR10 because it has a plus. It's similar to HDR10, but can theoretically at least get brighter. It aims for about 4,000 nits, whereas HDR10 aims for about a thousand. And it allows for dynamic metadata. So that means that that contrast, brightness, and color parameters can change with each frame of the video instead of being the same across the entire video, which allows for the content to be closer to the way the creator intended. Now, usually those values will be adjusted per scene or when the lighting changes, not every single frame, it, it just makes more sense. Now, usually those values would be adjusted every scene, not necessarily every frame, as that's when the lighting changes and that just makes the most sense. But they could do it every frame. Now the downsides to this format is that it was created by a consortium that includes Samsung, Panasonic, and 20th Century Fox. And while they have promised to be royalty free, just like HDR10, there's some political issues here. Namely, they only really see it on Samsung and Panasonic displays. LG, for example, would never put HDR10 Plus because of Samsung's involvement on their TVs. And at least at the moment, most streaming services don't support it. Hey Dave, how you doing? Busy? <laughs> hi, hi, Dad. Um, I'm I'm in the middle of filming. Can I call you back? Yeah, no problem. I'll, yeah, call me back. <laughs> okay, bye. By the way, this TV can do Zoom calls when you plug in a compatible webcam via the USB port. Next, we have HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma. Now, it was developed by the UK's BBC in conjunction with Japan's NHK, two national TV broadcasters. The reason it exists is that unlike the other formats, which if you don't have a compatible TV or display, the content provider needs to have two different versions available at least, one HDR and one SDR. Now, for internet providers, this isn't that hard to do as they just upload various formats and usually multiple HDR ones as well because of the reasons that we're discussing. But for broadcast transmissions, that would mean broadcasting both of these formats, or multiple again, over the air and using up their very limited bandwidth that internet providers don't have to worry about. So HLG was created as a way to send out both formats in one signal. The TV just accepts the signal and displays HDR if it can or SDR if it can. not It's also a royalty free format, just like the others we've mentioned so far on this list. It does 10 bit color and it aims for about 4,000 nits of luminance. And you can find some HLG content on the BBC iPlayer app or you know, obviously being broadcasted by those two broadcasters. You can also find it on YouTube in some cases and direct TV even, but it's much less prevalent than the others so far on this list. So this TV, for example, which can watch live TV through an antenna or even YouTube live, would be able to watch HLG broadcast because it supports that format, as well as HDR10 and the next format we need to talk about, Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is one of the most popular HDR formats besides HDR10. Now, this format is made by, you guessed it, Dolby. The same company that created Dolby Atmos and Dolby Surround Sound and others you've maybe heard of. So this format, like everything else that Dolby does, is proprietary, which means that for cameras to TVs or any displays in general, the manufacturers need to pay a licensing fee to use it. Now it does support dynamic metadata like HDR10+, but also has 12-bit color, which means 4,096 shades of each red, green, and blue for a total of 68 billion colors. It can also support up to 10,000 nits of luminance, theoretically, and there's maybe only a handful of TVs on the planet that can do that type of brightness, and they are very, very expensive right now, but again, that's the theoretical limit for the format. And it can be found on Netflix, Netflix, Apple TV+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, and some shows on Amazon Prime Video as well. Alexa, play Witcher on Netflix. Oh, you can also control playback hands-free on this TV as well, so. Alexa, fast forward by two minutes. Sorry, that part's a little too gruesome to film. Also, a lot of gaming consoles actually support Dolby Vision as well as HDR10, like the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. Alexa, switch to HDMI 1, both of which I haven't been able to buy because I can't find them in stock. So this is my Nintendo Switch that cannot play HDR. But how cool is it that I can use my voice to change to that input on this TV? So the truth is, is that all of these formats will provide better brightness, contrast, and color than your standard dynamic range content. But they'll only work if you match the content in that specific HDR format to a TV or a display that supports that format. So 
check what services you use, whether that's streaming or broadcast, like Netflix or Hulu, and see what HDR formats they usually use. And then just make sure that you get a TV that supports those formats. And obviously, the more of them, the better. Also, keep in mind that the hardware of the TV or the display that you're watching that content on will actually determine whether it looks better than it does on another TV or display watching the same format. But you guys, check out Amazon's Fire TV Omni series at the link below. I actually will link to the best price that I could find on it there for anyone who's curious. Thanks again to them for sponsoring this video and letting me borrow this TV for it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope uh, this helped you learn something about HDR and what you should be looking for when you buy a TV and what the differences are between some of those formats that you may or may not have heard about. Regardless though, thanks for watching and um, I'm gonna watch a movie. I was paying too much attention to trying to film and uh, not enough to my cholesterol. It's delicious though. It's just, it's a lot of butter.